Hey Top Shelfers, welcome to Behind the Bar, where we make historic cocktails enjoyed every day. And this is our exclusive content just for you guys who are on our email list or who are our locals patrons. Thank you so much for being part of the Top Shelf community. You guys are the reasons we do all of this. Today, I have a very special drink to bring to you guys. It is called Apple Pie. It comes from that beautiful recipe book known as Just Cocktails from 1939. It was my great grandfather's cocktail book and it's something that is very special to me. Now, as all things that come up with our uh, favorite sons section of that book is that it is a regional favorite and so the history behind the apple pie cocktail that is listed in that book uh, the history is kind of hard to find uh, so for us we're going to be making the drink and seeing how this cocktail comes out and of course I like to compare it to my own apple pie cocktail because as you guys may have remembered uh, when we made our eighth episode which was our Johnny Appleseed episode aka Indiana Pothead I made that particularly with the idea of trying to make something that would taste like apple pie so we're gonna make this and see how it holds up so pretty ex pretty uh, uh, excited over that. To start our drink, we are going to get out our martini glass. Now you could also use a coupe glass or any other car or any other cocktail glass, I should say, uh, that will work with uh, our drink. Now, mind you, in some of the apple pie recipes that I've seen, that, mind you, are differ greatly from the one that we're working with in terms of ingredients. I've also seen Irish coffee uh, mugs being used, which is a glass uh, Irish coffee mug, uh, and then they would normally top it with uh, whipped cream on top. But I don't know if that's really gonna work with the ingredients that we're doing today, so we're gonna stick with a martini glass. And I would like to chill this glass, of course. Uh, and as usual, with our historical cocktails, we wanna chill this down the old fashioned way with some ice and a little bit of water. So let's grab some ice, pour it into our martini glass, make sure that none of them escape. They are our prisoners after all. <laughs> and then we pour in our water. And this is going to chill down the glass to a desirable temperature while we make the cocktail in the meantime. So we'll put that off to the side, put down our pitcher, and let's get started making the apple pie. So we're gonna get out our shaker here. Now the apple pie begins with uh, a half of rum, or at least that is what is uh, communicated to me in the recipe book. Now as with a lot of things in these recipe books, they give us specific measurements on certain drinks, and then on other drinks they don't. They just give us the parts. And on this one, with a half, that's just gonna mean that it's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of parts of liquor. And since it's a one-half rum, we can make this as large or as small as we want. And for one part here, I'm gonna use one ounce. Now, if we wanted this to be a bigger drink, we could make it two ounces, and it would be two ounces to two ounces, which would be a half to a half. So just to give you an idea of what they mean when they say one half rum and they don't give you any other context, that's just one part rum, let's say. Uh, so I'm gonna use Bacardi as uh, my rum today. Uh, you can use any type of rum that you would want. You can even use dark rums if you like. A spiced rum would also probably work really, really well in this particular recipe. I don't happen to have any on me uh, at this current time, but that may actually work well in terms of the apple pie flavor you can use your discretion. This will add some nice sweetness, however. So we will pour in one ounce of our Bacardi rum into our shaker. And then we are going to follow that up with one half ounce, or I'm sorry, one ounce or one part of uh, Italian sweet vermouth. Um, it calls for Italian vermouth. Most of the time that can be dry or it can be sweet. I think with the apple pie, we wanna lean on sweet as opposed to dry since this sounds more like a dessert drink. So we're gonna put in one ounce of our sweet vermouth here. 
pour that in. Looks lovely. Then we're going to follow that up with what it calls for four dashes of brandy. Now in this particular recipe book, four dashes of brandy comes out to uh, about one and a third teaspoons. One dash is a third of a teaspoon. So I've got my little measuring stick here and that gives me uh, one teaspoon is about this much. So we're gonna pour that in and then we're gonna shorten it to about one third of a teaspoon to make sure that our measurements are as accurate as possible uh, to give us a four full dashes that it calls for. So let me just pour this out. All right, I think I actually got the third in there as I slipped off the off my scoop a little bit. So we're not gonna add any more than that. It's about one and a third, maybe just a little bit more, hopefully not too much more. But next it calls for two dashes of grenadine or about two thirds of a teaspoon. So we're gonna shorten this up here. Luckily this is adjustable. It's a pretty cool little tool that we have. And I've got my homemade grenadine here. I really recommend homemade grenadine if you guys want. I think it's much better than store-bought grenadine uh, just because the flavor is so much more on the pomegranate side. Uh, and that's really what grenadine is. It's a pomegranate simple syrup. So if you want more pomegranate flavor, a homemade grenadine is excellent, especially one that uses this, which is pomegranate molasses, which includes a uh, date syrup, I believe. And that will give you some nice body and some extra sweetness that will make it really quite unique. Uh, so this is going to be about two thirds of a teaspoon here. We're gonna pour that in slowly so that we don't pour in too much. And we've got that all nice and cozy in there. I've made a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. We're just going to bottle that on up lick our fingers because this is our show and our drink and you're not tasting it. So hygiene is not as emphasized. <laughs> um, but the last thing that we wanna add here is what calls for four dashes of lemon juice. Now you can use fresh lemons if you like, but I'm going to use pre-juiced lemons. Now I have some key lime lemon juice. This comes from Nellie and Joe's. Uh, so they also make key lime juice, of course, and it's very, very tart. Mind you, this is pretty tart too but I think it's gonna give us the right amount of flavor that we're looking for. Now with four dashes of lemon juice, this is gonna give us a good amount of citrus. So we wanna be very precise here because this will be overpowering uh, if you go too far. So we're going to very carefully measure out one teaspoon. There we go, I think that's enough. And then we're gonna shorten it up to our one third of a teaspoon. It should be right about there and pour that on in and no more than that like i said we want to be very precise with these measurements otherwise this will overpower just about everything now we have all of our ingredients in there the last thing we want to do is we want to take our ice and we're going to shake this up so that all of those ingredients can get to know each other really really well pour that on in and now we're going to take our top shaker put that on top and we shake. Oh yeah, it's nice and solid. Let's see if this comes off. There it goes. It smells interesting. The grenadine actually comes through a lot here. I can really smell my grenadine most and the vermouth. This will be an interesting uh, combination. Like I said, this is an old recipe, so perhaps some of the uh, per more modern opportunities that we have in terms of ingredients um, may not be available here. So we're going to take our strainer, put that there. We're going to take our glass and drain it of our water and ice. Make a massive mess over there. We'll, we'll clean that later, it's fine. And we will now strain, oops. Stra you know what, I'm just gonna transfer this. It'll make it easier. That's why they make smaller containers for this particular moment. And we strain into our martini glass. And it looks gorgeous. That looks beautiful. Uh, when I'm looking at this, it really actually reminds me of an apple pie. Maybe that's the reason why they called it that. And with other recipes that are have called themselves apple pie, they have called for a cinnamon stick to be our garnish. So we will follow in that frame of thought and garnish ours with a cinnamon stick. And this will just probably float just across, but it looks beautiful nonetheless. Look at that after all. Does that not look like a delicious apple pie in a drink? I think so. Let's give it a try.
that's fascinating. That's actually quite interesting. So one of the things that I'm really tasting here, and you'll find this too when you're making apple pies yourself, is that apple pies sometimes call for lemon juice in order to keep the apples from browning, right? Or have you, or sometimes you'll dump the apples in the lemon juice in order to bring out their tartness, especially with Granny Smith apples. This reminds me a lot of that. And the aromatics of the cinnamon stick as our garnish really emphasizes the apple pie flavor. As we take another sip, the pomegranate kind of pushes back the extra sweetness with the vermouth, and it gives you an idea of an apple pie that's not so cinnamon heavy. It's almost like, a, 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 like an apple pie that's really just focused on the apples. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me so much of like if you took Granny Smith apples and you didn't throw a lot of sugar in there and then you served that to me in a pie, that's what that would taste like. It's really quite refreshing and fascinating to see. I totally understand now why they call this apple pie because this is a delicious drink. Certainly one I recommend you guys make at home. But uh, yeah, absolutely fascinating. And make sure you garnish it with the cinnamon. The cinnamon just adds that final touch. It is perfect. But I think this is a fantastic drink, one you guys definitely should try. But from all of us here at Top Shelf History, thank you for joining us here behind the bar. Cheers.